Hey guys, God bless you all. God bless you all. I have a very powerful message for us today. Um, and most of this message is actually not going to be mine. Um, I added a little bit to it. But this is actually an old word that my husband and I were given when we were at a marriage conference this last year. Well, actually, it was this year, the beginning of this year in like February or something. Um, it's Dale and Gina Forehand. It's called Together. Uh, so this year was Together 22. Next year will be Together 2023. If you've never heard of Dale and Gina Forehand, you really need to look them up. They have a very powerful testimony. Um, their ministry is called, I believe, Stained Glass Ministries. And Gina has a very large women's ministry. They have really seriously blessed my marriage. Uh, my husband and I, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we have been through some really rough stuff in the nine, almost 10 years we have been together, there has been a lot of heartbreak, a lot of pain, um, a lot of situations that we have put um, ourselves in that has caused us to not be able to really trust the other. And there's been a lot of trust that's had to be repaired and that is still being repaired. But anyways, today, what I want to talk about is, is how pain that is not transformed is transmitted. So pain that is not transformed is transmitted. What I mean by that is transmitted to someone else. So if you have pain in your heart that has not been dealt with, then that will eventually be transmitted, transferred, you could say, onto the people all around you, whether that be your children, your spouse, um, other members of your family, friends, coworkers, whatever it may be. Pain that is not transformed is transmitted. So let me just pray for us real quick. Lord God, oh Lord God, we love you, God. We love you and we worship you. Lord, we know that your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted. You are near to those who are crushed in spirit, Lord. And I have found this to be true in my own life, Father. Some of the most powerful encounters I've had with you have been when I've been in the worst pain of my life, Lord. So I just pray that anyone watching this at any point in time that is going through pain that has not been transformed, Lord God, I pray that you would give them the forgiveness in their heart that they need or whatever it is they are lacking, that you would give them what they need to be able to lay that untransformed pain down at your feet and let you do what only you can do, Jesus. You are our great healer. You are a mighty physician. You are the wonderful counselor. You are the prince of peace. You are the everlasting God. You do not wish for us to walk around in pain. You do not intend for us to be walking around with this huge yoke around our neck, this burden of pain and unforgiveness and maybe it's unforgiveness towards another person or maybe it's pain we've caused ourselves, and it's unforgiveness and shame towards ourselves. I hear God saying today is to the day to let it go. Today is to the day to receive your freedom. Today is the day to exchange your pain for my peace. But you have to give it to me. You have to hand it over to me. I love you so much that I give you free will, says the Lord, and I will not force you to hand your pain over. I will not force you to accept my peace. I will not force you to accept my healing. But if you will only trust me with your heart, says the Lord, listen up, I'm prophetically speaking to someone right now. If you will only trust me with your heart, says the Lord, then I will take it and I will mend it and I will put all of those broken pieces back together. Because I am a good, good father. I am a good, good father. Yes, Lord, you are a good, good father. So, Lord, as we go into the time of this word, I just pray that you would anoint my vessel, Lord, with your anointing. I pray, Lord, that I would speak truth with boldness and clarity and grace, Lord. I pray that all ears are open to hear and that all hearts are ready to receive. Father God, we just surrender all to you. We just come to you right now, the ones of us that are in pain, and we just say, Lord, we lay this pain at your feet. 
Father God, we lay it at the altar. We need you to take this pain and transform it, Lord, so we will stop transmitting it on to those we love. Oh, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I just pray for anyone watching this who is going through pain, Lord. Show them your goodness. Show them your glory, Lord. Bind up their broken heart. And we will give you all the glory and honor. For you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Do you know why we say amen? I'm sure most of you do, but maybe someone watching doesn't know. Amen. When we say amen, we're saying, so be it. You are saying, I agree. I agree. So be it. And the Bible says, we're two or more, if two, two or more pray together in my name. Like if we come into agreement together, then so shall it be. So when we pray, when someone prays, if it's something that you agree with, then you should always give a verbal amen. God hears the cries of his people. God hears the prayers of his people. He is not a, he's not a dead God. He's not a deaf God. He's not a mute God. He's very much alive. He very, 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 very much loves to listen to his children. It is his joy to listen to you. He loves when we pour out our heart to him. He doesn't care if we come to him in a good mood, bad mood, sad mood. He doesn't care. He just wants us to come to him. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, so today, like I said, we're going to be talking about pain that is not transformed is transmitted. The scripture I'm going to be teaching off of today is Isaiah 61. I'm just going to read the first first bit of it, but please go back and read the whole thing for yourself. And if I have time, I may go back and read all of it at the end. It is a very good chapter. It's very encouraging, and it will really bless your life. So Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness the prison for the prisoners, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. To provide for those who grieve in Zion, and to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness or despair, some translations say. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to go back up to verse 1. We see three, three, three things here, three primary sources of pain. We see a captive, a prisoner, and the brokenhearted. So I want to break those three down, okay? A captive. A captive is someone who is held against their will. So maybe there's been someone who has really hurt you, who has really caused you a lot of pain. Maybe there's been somebody that you've really trusted with your heart and they have just really hurt you in whatever way. Then that would make you a captive, make you like a captive. All right, the other one is a prisoner. A prisoner is someone who did something wrong and they received consequences for their wrongdoing. So like sin. When we sin, there's always consequences to our sin. And then the third one we see is the brokenhearted. So someone with affliction, um, someone who has been shattered into pieces. They are just completely brokenhearted. Um, like I said in the beginning of this, I believe when I was praying, the Bible tells us that God is near to the brokenhearted. He really is. So... 
just want to go through and talk about these three things a little bit more and how if you are, whether you are a captive, whether you are a prisoner, or you are just flat out broken hearted, I, I want to go through here and tell you ways that you can receive breakthrough and freedom from the pain that is inside of you, whether it's pain from someone else, pain from yourself, or just pain from just the life in general, because let's get real here. You know, we live in a fallen world and there's a lot of sin and a lot of suffering and a lot of pain and heartbreak. We have all been through something. So if you are a captive, if you are a captive, someone who has been hurt by someone else, something that is not, it was not your fault, not your own doing. The solution, the way to receive freedom is to forgive, to forgive. That is the only way to get freedom from your, your mental torment and your heartbreak is to forgive. We are called to have unmarried, um, let's see, sorry. Like I said, this was someone else's message and I've added my own notes in here. So y'all bear with me as I try to turn this into my own message. Um, so to forgive literally means to release. And it's not just to release the other person, but it's also to release yourself. Because when you hold unforgiveness in your heart towards someone else, you know, you're really just holding yourself captive. You're holding yourself in prison. The other person's probably going on about and living their life. Um, but when you hold unforgiveness in your heart, you're holding yourself as a prisoner. God promises to be the judge, to bring justice to all unjust situations. He says that vengeance is mine. Um, okay, sorry about that. So Jesus, let Jesus be the judge, so you will not be judged. The Bible says that if we judge others, then we will be judged. But if we forgive others, we will be forgiven. We will be forgiven based on the amount that we forgive others. So today, if you are feeling like a captive, if you are feeling like, oh, there's just so much pain, I, I, you, you might even be watching this thinking, well, Brittany, you just don't understand. Like, you don't understand what they did to me. We don't understand what they did to Jesus when they crucified him on the cross. But what did Jesus say when he was dying? In the middle of him dying, he cried out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If Jesus can forgive the men who killed him on the cross, if he can forgive them, then surely you and I can forgive someone for a mistake that they have done, if they have sinned against us. We all make mistakes. And yes, I know that some of us have been through some really, really traumatic stuff. And we have really been crushed. But I am coming to tell you today that there is no other way to get freedom, freedom other than forgiveness. You can't just keep on going this way with unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart and think that it's eventually going to go away because it's not going to go away. It is not going to go away. And when you let unforgiveness in your heart, that is an open door to the enemy. It is an open door to the enemy to get into your mind, to bring other things like hatred, bitterness, so many negative things come from unforgiveness. And it also hinders God's blessing in our life. It hinders his spirit moving in our life. Um, there's no good thing about unforgiveness. So if you are a prisoner, if you are someone who has maybe sinned and now you are paying the consequences, I have been one of those people. I've also been the captive too in many situations, but I've definitely been the prisoner. So if you are a prisoner, then you need to repent, repent. And repent does not just mean to tell God that you're sorry and then to continue on living in the same sin cycles that you were living in before. Jesus, Jesus. Repentance means to literally turn and head a different direction. So if you're going this way, then once you repent, you should then be going this way. Once you repent, you should not stay in the same place. So a change, uh, we need to have a change of mind that leads to a change of action. 
We need to have a change of mind that leads to a change of action. So I'm going to read us Psalm 32 real quick. Oh, Jesus. So this is the Psalm of David. He says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions or sins are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. David said, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was zapped as in the heat of summer. Verse 5, listen to this. But then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. So if you are a prisoner, if you are finding yourself locked in a prison in this sin cycle that you just cannot seem to get out of, and sin doesn't necessarily have to be like, um, like alcohol or drugs or sex, sex addiction or pornography. A sin could even be something like responding to your children or your husband with bitterness or anger, um, using your tongue to sin, the way you talk to other people. Sinning could be such a huge broad spectrum of things. Sinning is anything that goes against the will of God. Anything that goes against God's um, original intentions, original plan for us. So if you are, if you are a prisoner, then you need to repent. If you are a captive, then you need to forgive. Repentance is turning away from sin and turning back to Jesus. So let's go back to verse 1 of Isaiah 62. Now we are going to talk about the brokenhearted. The brokenhearted. If you are brokenhearted, then you need to surrender your broken heart to the Lord and invite him into your pain invite him. He will meet you right where you are at. We do not serve a God that you have to clean yourself up for before you can come to him. He will meet you in all of your pain, in all of your suffering, in all of your hurt, in all of your trauma. He will meet you right there. The Bible says, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you have to open your mouth and open your heart and you have to to cry out to the Lord. You have to humble yourself before his mighty presence and cry out to him. You can't keep it all inside. It'll do you no good. You have to surrender that to him. You have to invite him to come and sit with you in your pain so he can mend up your broken heart. And he's able to do it. It doesn't matter how many pieces your heart has been shattered into. Our God, our good God can heal you, can restore you, he can redeem you, he can make you like new. The Bible says we are a new creation and he will make us new creations over and over again. Every time we surrender something to him, then we can have a new breakthrough. And that part of our life can become a new creation. So you may be thinking, I can't. I can't. My heart's too broken. I just can't. I'm going to be this way forever. Or I'm just not ready to heal yet. I just, I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, I've come to tell you today that you can't. But God can. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of you and inside of me. So we need to tap in to that miraculous power that is inside of us. We need to tap in and realize that we cannot know, but God can. So we can because God can. We can be victorious in this because Jesus holds the victory. Surrender is not a one-time thing either. We are called to live a life of surrender. Surrender in all areas. I, I have this prayer. Oh, where is it at? Um, I have this prayer 
that I, I pray. I don't pray it anywhere near enough. I used to pray it every day. Um, I need to start doing that again. But it's just a prayer of surrender. I want to say it real quick. And feel free to say it with me. It, it would be awesome if you would say it out loud with me. And just let the Lord know that you surrender all to him. Lord, I am yours. I want to be a vessel fit for your use. I dedicate myself to you. I give you my hands, my mouth, my mind, my body, my money, my time, my family. I'm going to add a couple things in. Lord, I give you my pain. I give you my unforgiveness, my unforgiveness towards others. I give you my unforgiveness towards myself. I, I give you my bitterness, Lord. I give you my anxiety. I surrender my fear to you, Lord. I surrender my fear fear to you, Lord. My fear of getting hurt again, Lord. I surrender that fear to you in Jesus' name. Father, here I am. I am yours. Do with me whatever you want to do today. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. So be expectant. Be expectant. God's been speaking to me a lot lately about those who come expectantly before the Lord. Do not leave disappointed. So come to the Lord expecting him to heal you. Whether you are a captive, whether you are a prisoner, or whether you are just flat out broken hearted from this hard world that we live in, expect God to move. Expect Him to bond up your broken heart. Expect Him to set you free from your own prison that you have made. Expect Him to, to give you a spirit of forgiveness, to be able to forgive the person that you trusted that sinned against you. Romans 8, 28 through 29 says, And we know that in all things, all things, not some things, not most things, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, those who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So say, I want to ask you, are you going to be a, a transmitter of pain or are you going to be a person with a testimony about your transformed pain? Because it's either one or the other that you can't, you can't be in the middle. You can't hold pain in your heart and it not be transferred to other people, transmitted to other people. That is not possible. If you are swallowed up with pain and unforgiveness inside, it is going to spew out onto those around you. It's going to be as infectious as cancer. And this world has enough pain. This world has enough unforgiveness without us adding to it. I just heard God say that he's fixing to take your mess and turn it into a message. He's fixing to take your test and turn it into a testimony. All the pain that you have been through, he says, my daughter, my son, it has been for a purpose. For a purpose. Your testimony is going to save other people. All that you have been through, I'm going to use it for your good and my glory, says the Lord. But you must trust me with your pain. You must surrender your pain to me. If you hold on to it, he says, there is absolutely nothing I can do with it because I give you free will. I give you free will to hold on to your pain. But if you would just trust me enough to let go, then I would take that pain and I would cast it as far as the east is from the west. And I would, I would bind up every ounce of broken heartedness in you. But you have to believe. You have to believe that I care enough about you to do that. You have to believe that I'm able to do that. You say that you believe I'm able to do all things. Well, if that is the case, then why are you not trusting me with your pain? Why are you not trusting me with your sin? Why are you not trusting me with your heart? Oh, Lord Jesus, help us trust you. Help us trust you, Lord. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read all of Isaiah 61 real quick and then we'll be done. It's just so good. I got to read it real quick. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom from the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, 
to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the joy, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long ago devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that they have that have been devastated for generations. Some of this pain has been for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work in your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priest of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of the nations. And in their riches you will boast. Listen to this. Verse 7 says, this is for ones who have maybe sinned against another. And you are still dealing with shame and unforgiveness towards yourself. I am one of those people who is in the process of going through transformation for that. I have now surrendered my shame and my, my unforgiveness to myself. I have surrendered that to the Lord. But sometimes I still find myself going back towards the, the self-condemnation and the shame thinking, and um, that's just not good. So verse 7 says, Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. The Lord says, This is for you, you watching this who is going through pain. This is for you everlasting joy will be yours. Mm. Verse 8, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. Verse 10, I will delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me with a ro in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow. So the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. When I just read that verse uh, 11 about the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes a seed to grow. It reminded me of something I heard on the, uh, the radio station yesterday. Oh Lord Jesus, help me remember exactly what was said. So when you plant a seed, okay, when you plant a seed into the ground, it, it, the initial sprout starts in the ground, but we don't see that. You know, we can't see it until it sprouts out above the dirt, but it's still growing while it's in the ground. Even though us outsiders, we can't, we can't see it. Well, it's the same in our lives a lot of the times too. When we are right at the edge of that breakthrough, when we are right at the edge of our freedom, of our breakthrough, we, we have, may have already sprouted, but we're in the soil where the Father planted us, and we haven't blossomed, we haven't sprouted out, out of the ground yet, but we have sprouted in the ground, and we are growing, and we're fixing to burst right through. Praise you, Jesus. And also, I want to say one more thing, and then I'll be done. Back up at the top, where it talks about the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to pro proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, blah, 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 all that stuff. The reason God wants to transform your pain is so you can go out and do this. So you can have the spirit of the sovereign Lord upon you. So he can anoint you to go and proclaim good news to the poor. So he can send you to bind up the brokenhearted. So he can send you to proclaim freedom to the captives. So he can send you to release from darkness the prisoners. You. But we have to receive ours first. We have to get right first. 
we have to be healed from our pain first before we can truly go out and heal others. We have to be delivered from our strongholds and our demonic oppressions first before we can really truly go out and effectively set other captives free. But Jesus loves you, and if you will only trust him with your pain, you will not be disappointed. I promise. So let the good Father, let him love on you. I pray, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray for a fresh revelation of the Father's love upon anyone watching this who is going through pain right now, whether it be self-inflicted pain or pain from another, pain from this world, whatever the source of the pain is, Lord God. I just ask that you will give them fresh revelation of the Father's love for them. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't forget to like this video, not because I want a bunch of likes, but because it helps the algorithm and it, it makes it where this is a more suggested video. Um, and also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And if you are feeling led by God to be a blessing to this ministry, then I will link my PayPal in the description and I will also link it in the comments. Thank you guys for always faith faithfully watching my videos. I love you and Jesus loves you. And I hope you have a great rest of the rest of the day.